There's a couple steps I like to follow when I'm doing photo bashing in Photoshop. Using a non-destructive workflow so that if I do need to change something later on, it's very easy to do. These steps can be used, they don't have to be, but they make my life a lot easier. Check these out. So step one is going to be cutting out your subjects that you're going to be photo bashing together. And I suggest doing this and having a background that you create yourself or you fill in with the Photoshop tools. So in this case, I have two photos of the same girl, one of her looking one way, one of her looking the other direction, and I'm gonna try and photo bash her heads together. So the first step that I would do is select her as a subject. We can press W in Photoshop and we can click on her or we can click on the individual assets that we are looking to uh, grab, but let's just start with selecting her. And here I'm going to Command Copy, Command Shift V, and that will create a copy that is non-destructive. I'm going to take the layer of the original photo and I'm gonna drop it below my background. That way I'm keeping the original image safe for any other changes in the future that I might wanna make. We can also hide that, you don't have to. Now let's move to the other image. This is the following image. The background on this image is kind of just a gray gradient. It's really just the wall behind her. So what I'll probably do here is following the same steps, let's cut her out, hit W, select her, and command copy, command shift V. Now we have another image of her. Now I'm going to holding alt, drag this image down also below our background. So we have the two original photos saved. Any future edits that we want to make, we can always go back to that. Now this image right here is going to be our main background. What I'm gonna do here is I'm also going to select her again, and I'm gonna hit delete and we're gonna hit deselect. Now we can kind of fill this in either using the brush tool and selecting one of the colors of the background, creating kind of a gradient in between, or you can use the generative fill by selecting that area and just hitting generative fill and hitting generate. Now I'm going to come over to what our generative fill created. I'm going to right click and I'm going to merge down. You can also press control E to achieve that. This is our new background, so I'm going to name it that. and. We are going to hit Control T and let's just drag this up to the top so that it takes up our entire artboard. Now we can turn our other two characters on. So step one is complete. We have officially separated our foreground elements from our background element. That is really step one. We want to have that movability and that customization available to us as we are manipulating these photos. Step two is going to be masking the individual assets. The next thing we wanna do is start manipulating the individual assets that we might wanna add and photo bash into our larger comp that we're trying to make. I have this image of a engine that I might wanna add some pieces into. So we can start by doing the same technique and grabbing the main engine and, and masking that out. But anytime you want to resize or move different parts around, you're going to have to resize the entirety of that image. Instead, let's select the individual piece that we want so that we have more control on a smaller scale when we're trying to manipulate each individual part. I like to use the lasso tool for this. It can be rough, can be kind of dirty. You don't have to be too exact with this step. This is just a nice way that I've noticed helps save me some time when I'm trying to maybe spin this or turn this around and I'm really zoomed in on the object. So I'm going to take this and I'm gonna go Command Copy, Command Shift V, and I just have that piece there. We can label this like Machine Part One. And you can do that a couple more times. Now that I have created a couple more selections of this larger engine, I can take this engine and just drag it down below our background. So these are the individual parts I have. And anytime I want to go back in and maybe grab a new part or du duplicate a part, I can always go back into our original image down here. And this is what, this is what we want. This availability of a non-destructed version of the pieces that we're creating. So the original cutout step is really complete now. We have our individual parts, we have our foreground elements, and we have our background elements all separated all easy to manipulate as we want to move forward. Step two is going to be masking. This is where we are going to hone in on these individual pieces and start painting in and out the different parts of them so that they can merge 
as well as resizing and stuff like that. This is the main part of photo bashing. This is the core of it, is taking individual images and blending them together. And the easiest way to do that is through masks. So let's start working on it. We're going to connect this head to this neck and it's going to be kind of hidden behind. So I'm going to drag this up and over and we're just gonna make sure that the heads are the correct size. So I'm gonna drag this down probably just a little bit and maybe we're gonna turn this a little bit too. That looks good. Now I'm going to actually bring this head up to the top and we're gonna start masking it out. The way we're gonna do that is click on this layer mask. It's pretty simple. The nice thing about this layer mask is instead of using an eraser, we're going to use the brush tool. And with the brush tool selected, we can, with black color selected, paint out the image. And anytime we want to undo what we just did, we can just hit X on our keyboard, switches our color to white, and we can paint that image right back in. This gives a lot of control over the different steps we're going to be taking as we try and make these look like they're one image. Before we get started, let's hide these machine parts until we get this head perfectly matched to this other body. <laughs> Okay, so now that we have these heads connected in a way that seems eh, believable enough, let's turn back on our machine parts and decide which ones, if any, we want to add to our model. I think this one would look really cool under the skin kind of where the tattoo is because it's already almost in the same direction as that part of the arm. So I say that we add that in. This is machine part three, so we can turn off the other two, and let's just skew it a little bit, as well as flip it like that. And now that that is kind of the direction that we want it to be, let's also mask machine part, and let's start painting this. With this painting, mask painting, I'm going to use the harder brush, not the softer brush. We want it to really give off as if it is under the skin. And it's important to follow the contours of the, the body when manipulating things like this, painting things in and out. So as we can see, this is kind of rounded here. So we want to give that sense of form where it's, it looks like the skin is kind of going back in and then coming back out as we go up and down with the bumps and forms of, of the anatomy. And right here, we have a little bit of a bump. So let's switch to our black brush and let's paint a little bit of this out and paint a little bit back in. One way to make sure that your edges are smooth is by turning smoothing on. It can just help you get some nicer forms. Now, luckily for us, this image already has shadows coming from the correct direction. We have our shadows on the right side of our frame and right here we have shadows on the right side of our objects so that's good that's going to help a lot that will really help sell the image that you're trying to bash together keep that in mind as you continue on your photo bashing now that the form is looking correct we can start painting in other layers on top of this machine layer the way that we're going to get it to stay is by using layer masks so I create a new layer right above my machine part three, and I'm going to holding alt or option, click in between the two layers, and that will mask this layer onto this layer. With the brush tool and my shadow layer selected, anything that I paint will only stay on that layer. Now our highlights and shadows seem to be pretty monotone. So I think just using a gray or a, a black with low opacity will work just fine. We're going to definitely use our soft round brush here as we don't want the shadows to be too harsh to match the shadows in our scene. I'm gonna come up to the opacity and I'm gonna drop this down to probably around 50-ish percent. The easy way to add in some depth to 
the photos that you're bashing in. Now these edges look pretty harsh. They almost make her skin look paper thin. So we should definitely add above all of this a layer of highlights and shadows to the skin to give it a little bit more depth. Nice thing is, is we can literally use the colors of the highlights and shadows of the actual photo to make this look a little bit more realistic. So what I'm going to do is right above this shadow layer, I'm going to add a new layer in and we're going to call this skin thickness. And you know what? Let's do double C on that just for fun. Now with my brush tool selected, I'm going to hit I on my keyboard and grab a highlight. And then I'm going to hit X to switch our colors and I'm going to grab a shadow. I do want this to stick to right where our machine part is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt or Option and select right between our shadow and our skin thickness. Because this side of the skin will be in shadow, let's add the darker color here. And let's definitely use a hard round brush for this. Once we get over to a side of the skin that should have highlight on it, make sure that you switch to your highlight color. Once all of that is painted in, what we want to do is we want to make sure it's not a, too thick. And we want to kind of unify everything. So the best way to do that is to actually go back to masking. Little steps like this can really help sell when you're photo bashing two totally different images together. Mixing two images that are the same can be very, very easy to do because they come from the same lighting and maybe even the same subject. But adding in an image that has nothing to do with the original photo can be difficult. Now that we're done with the masking step, let's move on to the final piece of the puzzle. This is going to be unification. The true end all be all of compositing is making the three different images really look like they're one. And one of the best ways to do that is by making your image black and white. So we can come up to the top. Let's add a new layer. Let us use the bucket tool and hit D on our keyboard to add black and white. So I'm going to hit X and make sure that we have a white selected. And on our new layer, I'm just going to paint the whole thing white. Now with this, we can come down to color and this will turn our entire image to black and white, a grayscale view of our image. Doing this can really help you see how the highlights and shadows of the added images are matching with the original image. Making sure your photo bash looks correct, not just from a color standpoint, but from a contrast standpoint as well. Because our image looks pretty good, I'm not seeing anything that stands out too bad about the photo bashing here. The darkness of our darkest shadow here is not much darker than the darkest shadow of the actual image. So this kind of makes sense. The shadows of our image that we chose aren't exactly perfect, but that's okay. You can only do so much. Another nice thing is we still have two other machine parts pieces. And if we wanted to, we could grab one of these pieces and drop it right underneath this shadow layer. And that would replace the previous machine part piece that we were using. And we can even move this around and see if it's something if we like what we see here better. And all of the shadows and all of the skin depth will still work with the original image. Let's also try this with our machine part two. Drag it right above machine part one. Turn it on. Resize it. I'm kind of liking how this piece of metal here is showing up over this. So what I might do with this image is click the mask and let's mask out some of these other pieces here. We can leave the black and white filter over everything. Let's turn machine part one on. And let's drag it above machine part two. Let's see if there's any pieces of this that might look good. I'm really liking this metal border here. So let's incorporate this in. I'm really liking how complicated this ended up looking. It adds a lot of detail without sacrificing on the understanding that 
That's not what the interior of someone's body looks like. One of the final steps that you can take to really change an image and to really tie everything together is coloring. The original color looked like this. But there isn't exactly a, co a, a cohesion between the two pieces. Now, that might be the style you're going for is two obviously different things, which this is very readable. We see that this is metal. We see that she's made out of skin. Another way to tie things together when photo bashing is by leaving the grayscale filter on, we can select that grayscale filter, press Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, and E, and it creates a merged version of everything. This is now a single image without sacrificing all of the layers below. Very useful and non-destructive. We can now add some cool filters to this without destroying our previous composition. And if we don't like it, we can go right back to where we were. Let's try some different color modes. Start by adding in a solid color. Pick any color. Come up to the blend modes and go down to difference. As you can see, it's already adding in a unique color scheme that you didn't originally have. You can raise and lower the amount that this is affecting your image with the fill. The opacity works as well, but not quite the same way as the fill. You can also come back into your color fill and you can change the colors, which will really drastically change the composition itself. I hope this non-destructive workflow was helpful for you guys. Catch you in the next video.